Hey, it's Kithman, and yep, it's another Terra Invicta video. I know last time I said uh, it was the last of the hacking videos, because this isn't a hacking video. This is just some basic beginner tips if you're playing the game without hacking. As you can see, we're at the very start of the game. I've not even got past Greetings, the initial commander. stuff, so quickly get past that. Now... Basically, Terra Victor, you can split it into a number of phases. I'm going to try and avoid giving any major spoilers, but I will give one little spoiler that will avoid potentially an awful lot of frustration when you're playing the game. But I'll mention that when I get to it. Now, the first phase is basically getting control of some territory on Earth and building up all the resources, you know, income for all the resources you generate on Earth. Um, in this phase, what's quite important is to get a reasonable amount of boost. Because the next phase is when you start setting up the space economy, which is gathering these resources. And initially, to get that, you need boost more. You need a little bit of mission control, but Primarily you need boost because you need to actually, until you've got a space economy, everything has to be sent from Earth and that uses boost. Now, next phase after that, I'm calling that sort of the fleet phase. That's where you start building a reasonable fleet of ships, etc. Taking advantage of your uh, space economy to produce it because you can only basically produce ships on your resources here. And that's where you transition from needing boost for things in space to needing mission control to actually control stuff in space because everything being built is being built directly in space. And then the final phase is the meeting the victory condition for whatever faction you're playing. I'm not going to say anything beyond the fact that different factions have different goals and different requirements. Now, the one thing I will say, which is a minor spoiler, it revolves around mission control. That is, the aliens, they will attack you at, based on certain triggers. And there is one trigger based on how much mission control you are using. So you could have a million mission control, but if you just have the equivalent of the starting ISS, in orbit around Earth and that's it, then it's not an issue. But depending on your difficulty level, there'll be a certain point where if you have more than a certain amount of mission control, that's going to annoy the aliens a lot. And if you're not aware of that, you can find yourself in a sort of spiral where you think, oh, I've not got enough stuff, you need to build more stuff in space, which of course takes more m usage of mission control. That's the only reason why I'm giving it as a spoiler, because it can get very frustrating as a player if you if you just miss... There, there are some hints in the messages as that's what's happening, but they are very subtle hints, and it's very easy to miss them. And, as I say, it can lead to a lot of frustration. But anyway, this is more beginner tips. So, the first thing I'll say when you're starting is... You want to do nothing. And by that I mean you want to actually look at the world, look at your starting counsellors, and work out a bit of an idea. Where do you want to go? It may be a case of you've already started with a, right, I want to do X. That's fine. You know, you might be, I want to, take, I, I want to form a super Europe or a super China or a super America or whatever. And that's fine. You know, that's a, that's a goal. And you can start working towards that. But... If you've not got a set goal like that, you need to have a look around and work out where you want to sort of gain power on Earth initially. Um, because part of the building up resources is getting the right sort of countries to let you build those resources. And what I mean by that is you've got different sizes of countries. So you've got things like Russia, you've got China, you've got India you've got America. These are all very big countries. They produce a lot of stuff. 
but also because they produce a lot of stuff their control points require an awful lo large part of your control point cap if not more than it and also they have you can't really unless you're really really lucky on the dice or you cheat um, you can't gain control of them initially then you've got sort of the medium countries which could do various things you know stuff like Germany France is a bit of a special case because it's in the Union it's in the European Union already and can form a far bigger country um, but a lot of the countries that are in the EU at the start will qualify as sort of in between countries and then you've got the small countries that have things that are very useful say for example Singapore it's a small country a couple of control points but boy does it have a big income uh, per head um, or North Korea it only costs 3.4 of your control cap but it has a nuke at the start their military sucks but they've got a nuke so what do I suggest with regards to countries? Well, if you go up here, faction popularity, you can see is there anywhere where your faction is popular? So, for example, here, if we look, Humanity First is really popular in Myanmar, the Servants in Laos, the Initiative in Cambodia and so on. Now that might help guide your choice of where do you want to start? What sort of countries do you want to start building a base in? May well be that you know the countries you the area you're interested in doesn't have anyone, but there's no harm in finding out first. Go back to nations. But you need to decide, you know, sort of what you want to, you know, what sort of countries you want to go for. Now, things, different types of countries are better for different things. So, a big country, or one with a high GDP, primarily actually high population and high GDP, you know, reasonable GDP. So, India or China have the potential to be real powerhouses of technology of research um, America starts as a decent one and you know you can build it up and has other advantages um, but yes there are others that they take a bit more work to get to the point where you can you are really churning out but have the potential to be uh, far bigger so big countries are good for things like that small countries all these little ones down here, if you can keep them stable, are great for building things like mission control. Yes, you need to get them, the space program up and running there, but then they can just churn it out. And others like Israel and Singapore, they you know, sort of Israel, for example, starts with the space program. You can start building mission control here straight away. And, because it's a core economic region, you can actually have eight mission control built there. So, to sum it up, really, initially you want to be going for maybe one or two countries that have a decent supply you know, sort of either boost or mission control or the potential to provide that for you. Kazakhstan, for example, is really popular because it produces a whole load of boost. Um, especially if you can kick it out of the uh, take it out of the R Russian Federation to start with. Um, alternatively, you want to grab one of the small. You might want to grab one of the small countries that has a nuke. Most popular: North Korea and Israel, because Israel, like I say, can also be used then to build up resources, um, mission control resources specifically, or boost if you wish. Um, and also, some countries that border 
whichever large country you want to get. Um, that's why America is a bit harder, because basically it's only got a couple of countries on its border. Canada and Mexico. So it's quite hard. Whereas China, if you look, it's got all these little countries. And that's the key. The way to take a big country is, if we were to have a look now, you've got a 0% chance. Even if you spend all your influence, you've still got a 0% chance. It means you could, if you, if you made 100 attempts, you'd eventually take it. That one control point. You'll have spent a bucket loads of influence, far more than you... Uh, you earn in a month, but you'd have taken a point. Unfortunately, while you were taking that one point, all the other factions would have probably taken a dozen or more. But the chance here, you notice you've got the positive modifiers and the size of the national economy. Well, you can get more positive modifiers for having control points in neighbouring countries. So, without spending any influence, and even with a really low persuasion, you've got, say, what's the best one, yeah, 44% chance of taking the Himalayan states. So you take the Himalayan states, and that's going to give you a bonus to then taking a point in China. And if you've also taken, say, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Mongolia, you're going to have an even bigger chance of taking a point, an initial point in China. And of course, once you've got that initial point, it then becomes easier and easier to take the others because you get a bonus for having points in that country as well. So you basically sort of snowball. So that's the key there. Now... The other thing you need to do before you start doing things is actually look at your starting characters. What can they do? What are they good at? Now, your first counsellor will always have a control nation and always have investigate alien activity, but the rest is random. And initially, when you're building up, the most important thing is probably control nation, which she's got, and public campaign, which she doesn't. Let's look at the other guy. The other guy does have a public campaign. And every one of these missions either just works, but maybe has a cost, so set national policy. That will always work as long as you meet the requirements and it just costs a flat 10 influence. Investigate alien activity. That always works, just costs a flat 5 ops and so on. Others, though, like Control Nation, have a stat that drives your base chance. Now, for Control Nation, it's Persuasion. She's only got Persuasion 2. Not that good, unfortunately. The other guy, he's got Persuasion 7. Now, if we look at him... Ready for orders. Yes, he's still at zero. But he's got 7.5 and 2. So that's 9.5 plus. So that's almost the size. Oops. Clicked on the Philippines. There we go. So it's 5.1 versus 28.8. So I still showing a zero. But compared to Rosie's chance, you've got over twice the positive modifiers. So he's far better at controlling nations. Just China is still really, really big. <laughs> but these are your two initial ones. You want to look, you know, sort of. It may be that both of them have a really low persuasion and they don't have any yeah so they got you may be you only have one of your starting characters has control nation or something like that you may just want to re-roll um, there's no harm in that also initially you may be able to pick up an organization at the start whether or not you do is 
dependent in part on what else you're wanting to do initially because your initial resources are very limited so for example if you were to grab this that means you won't have the the influence left to get a second uh, to get a third councillor at the start but things you need to look at on your councillors what they can do what their stats are especially their stats for what they can do so for example Rosie here has got eight science but if you look through all of these there's not actually any mission that uses science in terms of stats she's got the mission uh, uh, things you can do that use her stats she's got control nation that uses a persuasion of two advise which is a sort of special case it's the only thing that sort of uses science but given its cost of influence you're probably not going to be using that with any frequency at the start anyway sabotage project uses her espionage of two steel project her espionage of two go to ground contact orbit deorbit transfer none of those are using stats control space asset uses a persuasion of two and investigate alien activity so looking at her she's really a very bad starting character because the only missions she can do are using stats at two contrast to this guy he's an activist persuasion of seven and he's got control nation that's pretty good coup d'etat uses command only got command at two Meh. public campaign Use persuasion of seven. Increasing rest. Uh, that's the uh, command of two again. Turn counsellor. Persuasion of seven. Inspire. Persuasion of seven. Control asset. Space asset. Persuasion of seven. So you see, from that point of view, in terms of being able to use his skills, he's far better now. The other thing that modifies the skills is the traits they've got. So he's got Veteran, that's giving him a bit extra command. If he didn't have that, his things like Increase Unrest would be even worse, because it'd be a stat of 1. He's got Firebrand, this is a modifier. Um, so depending on the stats of where he's doing the mission, it will have an effect. So if it's a country with low education and high inequality he's actually going to have a persuasion of 11 at the start of the game so he's going to be really good in some countries pariah means he's not so good in his home country which if we were going for china would be a bit of a problem because he's from china and transparent which doesn't really affect any of those missions whereas Rosie here she's got fanatic well she's got at least got doubles her persuasion in countries with low education but that's about it all in all I'd probably be tempted to re-roll especially if I was want if I was wanting to go for China here and finally you want to look at the other candidates that are available for your third and your fourth slot because pretty early on if you're not spending re influence you'll be able to get four councillors and the more councillors you've got the more things you can do and you use the same sort of logic looking through these now some of them cost 60 but again you'll be able to hit 60 reasonably quickly inflexible is another trait that ideally you want to avoid because basically leveling up increasing those stats gets harder some things like this they're good and bad you know it depends what you want to use them for other things like doctor is purely a positive trait and 
some of the uh, negative traits, things like Earthbound, you can spend experience to remove negative traits. But you're probably going to want to be... Well, you're certainly going to want to really be getting another two counsellors as soon as you practically can. Uh, occasionally it will mean that I'll choose to not get them for a turn or two because I'm wanting to spend the influence on a really good organisation or to make sure I get that initial country or something like that. But certainly within probably, I'd say, four turns, which is the first month initially, because each you got four turns a month initially, you probably want to have your full roster f filled out. Because ultimately you want to get resources, and the way you get resources is by doing things with these guys initially. So that's sort of part of the tips. The only thing I haven't covered is what to do once you've got a country. And for that, you need to play about with priorities. First thing I'd say is some of these you never really want to spend on. Spoils especially. Spoils are bad. The only time you'd ever really you should ever really be using them is say at the start of the game and you take Oh Singapore's probably a good example. You take Sim Singapore, you might run spoils for the first you know, sort of few months just to give you a boost to your income, because that's what spoils does, it gives you a boost to income. Unfortunately what it also does is it starts trashing the country. So much so that if you were to run spoils continuously, yeah, the country would just be... you wouldn't be able to keep control of it if nothing else because inequality goes up, that drives up... Uh, drives down things like cohesion, drives up unrest, and yeah, sort of the place can revolt. Also, you don't need to be putting in three dots into everything. You know, it's it's let's find a good example. Where's one with all these are sort of basically set by the AI. They all seem to be following the same pattern, these ones here. That's interesting. But yeah, USA is probably a good example. These percentage numbers are what matter. And you can get percentages by... without having to use lots and lots of dots if you control the whole country. It makes it then a lot easier from your point of view to see sort of what's there and what's going on. But USA probably is a good example. To get the most out of USA, you need to you need to do some work to it, because at the start, it's got high inequality, and what that means is um, cohesion is reduced, which is this value here, which is causing strife, and strife basically uh, causes uh, problems with production of stuff in the city in the in the region in the country and ultimately can cause it to revolt on its own even without another councillor you know another faction's councillor causing a coup or whatever so you want to get that down if you hover over it it'll tell you what can get it down and what is causing it to go up So, for example, cohesion here, it can be um, increased by unity and it can be increased by putting my, uh, investment into knowledge. Likewise, strife is being reduced by... Uh, unrest, rather, is being reduced by spending in military. Now, spending in military to get that down is actually 
not the best way to do it. Best way is to just use a counsellor to do a, you know, uh, decrease uh, unrest mission. Ready. The opposite of this one. Because doing that mission, well, initially, it, it will, at minimum, knock it down by 0.25 for just doing the single mission. Whereas, look at how little effect three investment points in military has on strife. Not much at all. And also, while those investment points are knocking down strife, they're not doing anything to actually increase the military tech level here. So it's far better to use your agent to just knock it down while you're at the same time you're actually using investment points to tackle whatever is causing that strife to be high. So what that means is you never want to use spoils, you don't want to use military to reduce strife and in the case of the USA you pro what you probably want to be doing is primarily welfare initially to get this down and some knowledge or unity probably a little bit of unity at the beginning with some knowledge and then gradually increase the knowledge over time that will bump up the cohesion that will bring down the welfare and at that point you'll reach a point where the unrest will stay down it won't go back up also it will bump up democracy which again uh, improves uh, economic growth and things like that you don't want to be building mission control in somewhere like America or boost in somewhere like America initially the reason being you've only got so many sort of control points and it's using an awful lot of so many control point cap and you're only using a large chunk of it to have America and it big countries as I said are best at building doing research say for example for you contrast that to somewhere like Israel this is where you'd want to be building mission control initially because that will give you a lot of mission control of course you've got issues here you need to deal with like with America you need to get the inequality down, you need to get the cohesion up, which has the natural effect of bringing the base, the rest value, you can see mentioned here, of uh, unrest down, while using uh, your agents to just sort of knock this down quickly. But then once you've sorted that out, this can ra rapidly build you a mission control. Once you've done that, you can switch to something else, maybe a bit of boost or what I've done in another game is, is producing me a little bit of funding. Because at the moment this basically provides 0.3 a turn. And see at the moment we're not getting anything. So that's what, 10 times what we're getting from the council, our, our councillors at the moment in this country. But if you do, if you get some small countries that aren't doing anything else and they've already done your mission control, having one or two of those just churning out funding, that number actually goes up quite quickly. America already starts with a decent high number, but just because of the way the game works, that number won't go up very quickly, even if you're putting a lot in funding in America. You know, funding is another one of those things that works not too bad, especially over a longer period, if you've uh, done it in advance, you've done it in smaller countries. And ultimately, what happens with a lot of these smaller countries, say Central American ones here, if you can get these stable, which admittedly actually is a bit of a challenge I'm finding in another game, if you get these stable they can turn out your mission control, then switch to say funding or knowledge, and then they can just be later absorbed by a bigger country. They keep all that mission control. And that's how you can end up with lots of mission control in a big country like America, is they don't build it, they just sort of absorb it. Best example of that probably is the uh, European Union. 
you can do that obviously a lot earlier so you can take say Italy and tell that right okay um, you can already build mission control get building mission control and once it's built mission control in its two regions which is a total of 14 it could then be absorbed by the European Union and suddenly it bumps up the population and the GDP etc of the European Union which then makes it more of a research powerhouse because at the moment it looks like quite a few of these other countries they all look very similar but when you group them all together they suddenly end up looking a lot more like the uh, like America in terms of their production and everything and actually can outstrip America relatively easily if done properly but anyway I've waffled on for half an hour now which I think is plenty of time so I'm going to say farewell and hope you enjoy the game and have fun with it because this is one of those games where you do just need to play about and have fun <laughs> and see what works for you anyway get that out